أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون All praise is due to Allah the exalted We praise him We seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils within ourselves And the evils of our sins Whomsoever Allah guides because they are sincere None can misguide and whomever he rightfully causes to be led astray because they are not sincere, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, is his servant and final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the noble Qur'an for our own benefit, what is translated as, O believers, be conscious of Allah as he deserves, as is his right upon you. And do not die except in a state of worship. Do not die except in a state of submission. Do not die except in a state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent upon righteousness throughout our lives and allow us to die upon it as well. Allahumma ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ramadan, ayyaman ma'dudat, ayyaman ma'dudat, ayyaman ma'dudat, limited days, limited days. And it seems like it was just yesterday. We were introducing Ramadan. We were welcoming Ramadan. And we were mentioning that the month of Ramadan came by so quickly. The year passed by so quickly. And of course, we reflected at the beginning as we do every year. Ayyama ma'adudat. You have limited days. And we, here we are today, alhamdulillah. We have made it to the last Jumu'ah, the last Friday of Ramadan. A blessed day due to its virtue of being Jumu'ah and also Ramadan. And also in the last 10 nights, May Allah accept from all of us, Allahumma ameen. But I want us to think about these two words, these very powerful, heavy words. Ayyama ma'adudat. It is not just about the month of Ramadan. As you see the days passing by very quickly, every Ramadan we experience the same thing and we say the same thing and it passes by very quickly. It's as though we blinked and it's gone. So too will we find the rest of the year passing by quickly. And so too will we find the rest of our lives passing by like limited days, ayyama ma'dudat. Because in fact, we have limited days in this world. And the reality is, we don't know how many days they are. 
the frightening reality that we prepare for is that we don't know how many limited days we all have individually. You may depart tonight, you may depart in 50 years. And death is a belief for all human beings, regardless of their religion, regardless of their backgrounds. The inevitable death that we will all experience is known to all human beings. And so the only wise thing, the only reasonable thing is to live a fruitful life for the sake of God, is to live a life fulfilling the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Ayyama ma'dudat, limited days. What are we doing with our limited days? Can you guarantee that you will be alive in the future to repent another time, to become a better Muslim some other day? Can you guarantee yourself that you will be here? We really cannot guarantee the next moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us long, healthy, righteous lives. Allahumma ameen. A brother in our community on his deathbed, as many others before him. He said, I feel like I can summarize my entire life in one or two sentences. I feel like I can summarize 65 years in one or two sentences. And the reality is on the day of judgment, people will look back to this world and will feel like it was an hour or two. In one, uh, uh, in one passage in the Qur'an, they will feel like it's an, a morning or an evening. It was a quick memory, it was a quick thing that I experienced. I grew up here, I went there, I did this, I did that. I settled down and then I passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us and guide us and forgive us. Allahumma ameen. Ayyama ma'adudat. What are we doing with the last few days, the remaining days of Ramadan? As we continue to work on our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this topic that really is central to everything else. It's so central to your entire purpose in life that when you're struggling and you notice as many people do that your iman rises and falls. Sometimes you feel more religious than other times. Sometimes you feel more connected than other times. And when we find ourselves going through these dips, these fluctuations in faith, we are supposed to utilize the resources that we have to rise back up once again. And the crux of the topic really is your love and our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much do you love Allah? Love is not about claims alone. We all know this. In any relationship, parents, their children, a husband, wife, relatives, friends, we know that love is not about claims. It's not about what you say, that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about what you do. Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on your actions? The one who loves Allah, for example, chooses Allah over his or her desires. The one who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what Allah loves and work towards every opportunity that Allah loves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who truly love Him and act upon that claim. Allahumma ameen. Here's an example of the love of Allah. At the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, the Messenger والسلام, appointed one man to lead the others in prayer during an expedition. And when he would lead them in salah, he would recite what he recited. And at the end of the recitation, there was one more thing he recited. One more surah he always recited. What was it? It was قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ He would always recite this surah to conclude his recitation in that last part of the salah, in the second rak'ah of the prayer. And the companions had not seen this before. So naturally, what did they do? They went to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they told him, and he said, ask him why he does that. Why does he recite qul huwa allahu ahad as a concluding recitation in every prayer? So they asked the man. And he responded, I love to recite this surah because of what it contains of Allah's names and attributes. I love to recite this surah because of what it contains of Allah's names and attributes. Now remember, Many believers, many companions at that time had experienced the darkness of shirk to worship idols and multiple deities. So when finally a messenger came to them and they were introduced to the reality of life, the oneness of God, he was so moved by it that he loved to recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say he is Allah the one. He loved to recite this surah. Why did he recite it? Out of love. He didn't recite it because it was a short surah or because this was the only surah that he knew. He recited this surah out of true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what he said. And he responded, tell him that Allah loves him. Allahu Akbar. Tell him that Allah loves him. Do we recite surah of the Qur'an repeatedly over and over and over out of love 
for the contents of the surah or do we recite because it's short and we're rushing away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, away from salah and back to our worldly distractions. May Allah forgive us and guide us. Allahumma ameen. Recite with contemplation on what you are reciting. Connect to it. For that may be the surah that you recite out of love that causes you to enter into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us and grant us His love in a very complete way and guide us and forgive us. Allahumma ameen. In the Quran, we find many references to Allah's love. Who does Allah love? Allah loves the people of justice, al muqsitin Allah loves al mutawakkilin those who put their trust in Him. Allah loves those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us as well, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِرِينَ Allah loves those who repent often, those who are constantly going back to Him. Every time you make a mistake, you go back to Allah sincerely, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, I know the last time I said I was going to stop backbiting, lying, doing such and such, I said I wouldn't go back. Ya Allah, please forgive me and guide me. Allah loves those who are constantly going back to Him. Not once, not twice, but every time you make a mistake, every time you fall short with regards to the uh, boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you rush back to Him. And what's interesting about this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ he is the one who forgives, Al-Ghafoor, constantly forgiving, Al-Wadud, the one who loves. So the scholars say in this ayah, you have something very obvious and clear. That every time you sin, and you sincerely return back to Allah, key word, sincerely return back to Allah, with remorse, with hope not to go back to the sin again, Allah doesn't just forgive you. He'll replace your sins with good deeds, and He will also love you more as a result of your tawbah. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us. Allahumma ameen. There's a beautiful dua we can all make, an action item. You can make this dua in any language you can express. This dua goes back to an authentic hadith. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who made this dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Oh Allah, I ask you for your love. Wahubba man yuhibbuk. And the love of those whom you love. وَحُبَّ عَمَلٍ يُقَرِّبُنِي إِلَىٰ حُبِّكَ And the love of actions that bring me closer to your love. This is a very practical, simple, powerful dua. But here is the most important thing with this dua. You make a dua as we do throughout these days and nights, these blessed days that Allah has given us, and then you have to follow through with action. If you want your dua to manifest, follow through with action. Look at the groups Allah loves. Look at the actions Allah hates. Do what Allah commands. Stay away from the prohibitions. And you will find yourself naturally earning the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that you really cannot measure. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of those whom you love and the love of actions that bring us closer to your love. Allahumma ameen. Another group mentioned in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. In this particular ayah, Allah gives us four examples of what he is referring to. Al-Muhsineen, the people of Ihsan, the people who do good. Who are they? In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who spend, those who spend in charity, in times of ease, times of difficulty, times of ease and times of difficulty, and they restrain their anger. When they're angry, they hold back. They don't say things they'll later regret. They restrain their anger and they pardon people. They forgive easily. Hoping for Allah's forgiveness. They forgive easily. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves the people who do good. Allah loves the people of Ihsan. Lilladina ahsanu al husna wa ziyada. And for those people who live upon Ihsan, they will have the best of rewards in the next life. Waziyada. What is ziyada? The Prophet ﷺ said, ziyada, more, more than the reward of Jannah, is the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humility and sincerity and dedication and ihsan in this world so that we can see Him in paradise in the next life. Allahumma ameen. Why times of ease and times of difficulty? Why are these mentioned? When we look at the psychology of the human being, our behavior as human beings, we find that with some personalities, when things are difficult like this pandemic, may Allah alleviate our affairs and the affairs of all of our brothers and sisters around the world. When people go through hardships, look around economically and look around at uh, humanitarian organizations. 
Some people, their reaction when things are uncertain, like last year in April when this first started, they start to hold back. March, April last year, a lot of people started to hold back. The stock market took a dip. People withdrew their funds. Why? They're worried. I need this. My family needs this. I have to worry about myself right now. I can't be thinking about other people. And that's why the charity that's given during times of hardship is magnified and multiplied. It is a test because not all people will give in times of hardship. Most people will be thinking what? About themselves. But there's also the test of ease. And that for some people is a greater test. That when your life is relatively easy and Allah blessed you and you're not really going through something severe or major, may Allah preserve us and protect us all and alleviate our affairs. Some people when things are easy are so attached to their wealth, to a dunya, to comfort that they cannot detach easily when it comes to the opportunity for sadaqah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, charity on one's deathbed is not like charity in good health. Why? Because the one who's on their deathbed is essentially thinking about departing from this world, detaching from the money that they knew they were not going to take to the grave and to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they want their wealth to be funneled into what? The bank of the afterlife. To be funneled into an investment that is lasting and eternal. But the one who's in good health, who thinks subconsciously and wrongfully that they have a long life to go, that person is tested with detachment from their wealth. And for some people, that is a greater test. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions both types of people in this ayah. And both types of people who step up to the plate. And they give in times of ease. And they give in times of difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves both of these individuals, rather both of these groups. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and elevate our ranks. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Seek forgiveness from Allah. He is the ever merciful, the most loving, the most forgiving. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to reward us if you feel like you did not do well in welcoming Ramadan, it's not over yet. If you feel like you really did not push yourself, it's not over yet. And it's not over on a single night, the 26th, the 27th, 28th, 29th. Rather, you push through till the very end. You push through till the last few hours as well and into the month of Shawwal. When many people start to give up, burn out or retire after a specific night, the wise believer is still actively pushing. Why? You are forgiven what has passed of Ramadan if your performance at the end of it is better. Verily, actions are judged by their conclusions as the Prophet said. And we are here now experiencing what? The conclusion of Ramadan. This is the last Friday of Ramadan. This is the last Jumu'ah of Ramadan. So push yourself and your families and your loved ones to take advantage that the, the, the month is not yet over. And we don't know when Laylatul Qadr is either. So push through every night and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us Allahumma ameen. No doubt, brothers and sisters, during these times, unprecedented times, we look for opportunities for khair. And I know and you know that the opportunities for khair, for goodness, alhamdulillah, we have access to so many of them. We have access to a lot of things online. Perhaps every day we are exposed to 5, 10, 20 different opportunities for khair in terms of charity, in terms of knowledge, in terms of lectures, in terms of programs, in terms of uh, advice, in terms of a hadith that's posted in ayah of the Qur'an. We have so many different opportunities to be people of ihsan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us at times to be in certain places at certain times for these opportunities. And as you know and as you've seen in the last few years and especially in this last year and a half during this pandemic sometimes the believer does not just look for an organization or an individual to support or to help but rather you're looking for maximizing your sadaqah jariya maximizing your continuous charity and we will continue to see in these last few nights of ramadan and even today we will see many of these opportunities what is the point here when you see an organization an islamic center an individual becoming a source of facilitating a lot of different streams of sadaqah jariya, then the wise believer takes advantage of supporting that cause. And by this, I am referring to this Islamic center here.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of these staff and the volunteers, the countless volunteers from all over the community who come and they help and they distribute food and they help a lot of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them immensely. I think we have all seen in this last year how much this Islamic center has done for the community, for Muslims and even non-Muslims. How much da'wah has been done, educational programs, taking care of the youth, distributing food, the food pantry, and so on and so forth. We really cannot measure the mental health organization, one of the most important committees every Islamic center should have, and the many more projects that we continue to see, alhamdulillah. And so this masjid, as you go around the country, and I have seen this myself, you see that not all masajid are open to other organizations coming in and giving our community the opportunity to help people all around the world. Not all masajid are open to that. They're thinking what? They're thinking, I want to save things for my community. But wallahi, you see the barakah, the blessings in masajid like this. When they open the doors of khayr, the opportunities for sadaqah jariyah, the barakah comes to the community as well. And I think we can all testify to this. This is the last Jum'ah of Ramadan. So give us inshallah ta'ala just two minutes after the salah to support this Islamic center and all of the causes that come through this center. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and elevate our ranks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are the people of Ihsan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us and to grant us the love of those whom he loves and the love of every action that brings us closer to his love. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who take advantage in times of ease and times of difficulty. And we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to forgive our sins اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولوالد والدينا اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم ارزقنا الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم فرج الكرب عن المسلمين في كل مكان في كل مكان في كل مكان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم طاهر بلاد المسلمين من أيدي الظالمين اللهم طاهر مسجد الأقصى من أيدي الظالمين اللهم ورزقنا فيه صلاة قبل الممات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارزقنا حسن الخاتمة واجعل خير أيامنا يوم نلقاك اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Sallu salatu muaddi'a and pray as though this is your final prayer in this world. Allahu Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون 
يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ألهاكم التكاثر ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله just two minutes inshallah ta'ala you know that your Islamic center here is one of the most productive alhamdulillah masajid in this country and a lot of khair comes from this masjid I ask you inshallah ta'ala just give us two minutes inshallah ta'ala can we get as many hands as possible I'm being very direct and very quick this is the last Jumu'ah the last Friday can we get as many hands as possible, inshallah, 